Welcome, and thank you for downloading this week, Take Aim Outdoors, the Bow Hunters Podcast. Whitetail hunting stories, tips, and gears from across country. New episode of Take Aim Outdoors, and excited to catch up with my old buddy Tim Insley from Living the Brand. Tim, what's happening, man? Man, not a lot. Uh, it's kind of funny we're talking right here because uh, I'm actually in the gym doing this podcast. Isn't that cool? <laughs> yeah. So if you hear any weights drop in the background, we know what's happening. <laughs> yeah, I'm over in the kind of the uh, lounge area, which is uh, it won't be too, too terribly too terribly loud over here. So. Uh, anyway, yeah, man, it's good to talk to you, Brandon. Have, it seems like we haven't, we haven't, I don't guess we've done a podcast together since uh, APA, huh? Yeah, probably not. Yeah, it's been a minute. Yeah. Yeah, matter of fact, I don't even think we've talked really besides a couple, you know, subtle texts here and there, but it's yeah, yeah. been busy. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, yeah, I'm glad to be back on. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem, man. Always like having you on. And uh, I know uh, you had a rampant, busy turkey season and, and now here we are, middle of summer, and we're literally around the corner from deer hunting season. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, me too. And I'm really trying to forget about turkey season, to be honest with you right now. But it's, uh, my turkey season was, was so rough. It was uh, uh, probably the, you know, I, listen, I love the turkey hunt, and I'm not going to grab about having the experiences that I had because I got to hunt some pretty amazing places for turkeys. But, uh, Man, they just kicked my butt this year. I mean, normally I'm a guy that prides himself on being able to, you know, to kill kill turkeys, get it done. And uh, uh, this year, I just I just couldn't get it done very well. I mean, it was uh, it was just tough. It was a tough season for me. And uh, I guess everybody goes through it. But you know, I'm not going to complain because uh, I hunted some really cool places this year. Took some chances with some places I've never been. And uh, yeah, so uh, outside of just struggling to. to to get a bird, you know, getting birds down, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to trying to push forward through turkey season and go, go on to deer season like it's going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> I hear you. Well, good news is, you know what I mean, we're at that point, so, which is super excited. So do you, you know, well, before we bust into the deer season, tell everybody where you're headed here to the Total Archery Challenge here. Yeah, uh, so uh, next week I'm going up to uh, Big Sky, Montana uh, to the Total Archery Challenge. It'll be my first time to ever to ever go to one of these events, and uh, I'm going to be a guest of uh, Onyx Maps, and uh, they've got a lot of big things coming up. Uh, you guys really keep watching because, uh, man, Onyx is fixing to change the game as far as uh, the way you hunt, and uh, even more than they have in the past. But they're having a bunch of us up there, I think, uh, uh to, to the Total Archery Challenge, and they're going to introduce some new some new stuff there. And uh, uh, so I think it's uh, like me and Tim Burnett, Jason Mattinger, Randy Newberg, uh, Sam Soholtz, uh, uh, several of us are going to be up there and uh, hanging out for, for three days and shooting targets and showing people the new Onyx Map Club uh, stuff that they've got well, that, that will be cool. And uh, are you, are you going to get a little bit of time to actually run through the course? I am actually. Uh, that's one of the things they did say was that uh, you know they they definitely wanted us out shooting the course. Uh, they're going to have their guys kind of man in the booth, and, and, and you know this will be my first experience uh, of this. I mean, they, they, I've been looking at it, and they've been saying there's some shots, you know, that are you know 100 yards with a 45 degree angle straight down on top of the mountain. So uh, uh, I'm kind of looking forward to to hope I don't lose too many arrows. I'm taking a I'm taking two dozen arrows with me, so maybe that'll be enough for three days. Okay. Man, I hope so. Anyway. <laughs> I, I know that I've, I've heard the stories that uh, you run through arrows on that on that course. So uh, that that to me would be the minimum amount you would need, no doubt. Well, if I run out, I just won't. I'll just hang out in the booth. I won't hide anymore. I'll just uh, if I run out of arrows. I'll just hang out in the on and show people all the new product. I can just be. A, I can just be yep. there. But either way, it's going to be fun. I mean, you know, how often do you get to go share a, share a house condo with uh, with the the caliber of guys that I'm going to be in there with? Some of my absolute heroes in the outdoor industry. Uh, obviously, Jason Magazine and I have been close friends for, for 
for years, and, and uh, he's been a total inspiration to me my whole life, and then you know, my, as far as my hunting career goes. And uh, same with Tim Burnett, who, as far as a guy goes like me that, that you know, pretty much solo films everything. I mean, I don't, I don't have a production company that goes with me, and rarely do I have anybody that goes with me. Uh, and all the films that I end up creating, um, and the, mostly, you know, the episodes for Living the Brand are, are all because I shot them, you know. Uh, myself and uh, so it was uh, you know to have those guys and be able to hang out with those guys and uh, even though I've known them you know we've, me and Jason have been in some camp situations I think this will kind of be kind of similar to, to like being in camp with these guys with him Randy D. Bird and Sam Soho he's one of my favorite photographers and doing amazing things and and, uh, uh, and, and the guys from on X plus you know all the other guys are going to be there I know the guys from Badlands are all going to be there and Badass Outdoor Gears uh, there's a lot of a lot of people going to be there, and I'm, I'm excited to see everybody. Heck yeah, man! You should have a good time, and uh, no doubt Sam is a phenomenal, phenomenal photographer, and I love always checking out his stuff. He's always up to something cool, so that would be a cool crew you're hanging with, no doubt, man. Yeah, and if you haven't checked out his Instagram, uh, his Instagram story page, if you guys haven't been watching Sam whole Instagram story while they're building this bus, they bought this. Have you seen that, Brandon? Where they bought the school bus? Oh yeah. Some, yeah, absolutely. He's innovated on the inside. It, it, it's freaking awesome. Like, uh, I just talked to Sam the other day for a few minutes, and uh, uh, I told him, I said, man, that thing looks sweet. He's like, damn it. You know, he said, he's, he's even amazed that it turned out as good as it did. But, I mean, that thing's like a, it's like a, a, a you know, high-end, you know, RV on the inside. And it's just a little yellow school bus, and they're going to drive it all over the country and, and film and film and hunt and take pictures. You know, for, for it definitely is, man. He, he, it is. He's turned it into a very sharp looking, you know, hunting rig slash RV. But it, it is uh, not lacking any sort of luxury amenity inside. It looks very sharp and uh, almost like he had, uh, you know, interior designer help with it because, man, that thing is pretty badass. Yeah, it just shows me that Sam's even, you know, he's, he's down to a lot more areas than just taking pictures and video. So, uh, uh, yeah, the fact that, that they basically put all that together himself. And, uh, I know he had some help with it, but uh, you know, he basically did the whole layout and design and everything. But, uh, but yeah, I'm excited about the, the total RC challenge. I've never been to one. You know, even back in the days, you know, when those were called bowcast at the birds. If you remember that, I know you do. Uh, oh yeah, for sure. Because that's kind of where it all started with Snowbird Mountain with bowcast at the yep. birds. Then that turned into total archery challenge and. Now there's so large a challenge, you know, all over the country, but uh, I think there's five or six of them. But to be able to go to Big Sky and be in Montana, I think it's going to be amazing. I'm excited. Can't wait to get up there and hang out. Yeah, for sure. Have you ever been up there, Tim, to Big Sky? I haven't been to Big Sky. You know, I've been all around Bozeman and the northern part of Montana and the northeastern part of Montana. And then this year I actually camped for two nights by myself in the Custer National Forest down uh, in the kind of southeast, southeast corner right off the right, not far from the South Dakota line. Um, uh, I actually camped down there for, for a couple nights by myself and turkey hunted out of, out of a little two-man tent. So uh, I've been I've been a lot of places in Montana, and Montana is one of my by far one of my favorite states in the United States, especially one of the most beautiful. And uh, but I've never been to Big Sky, so I'm super excited. Yeah, that's super cool. I've never actually even got to go or hunt Montana yet, and uh, I've had a couple almost trips there, and uh, I've just heard really really good things about. Uh, Big sky and how beautiful it is. So that's going to be pretty awesome for you to have that experience. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I'm actually trying to, and, and I have been for the last few years, trying to, to piece together a chance to go out there and, and, and do a mule deer hunt. You know, and uh, not necessarily in Big Sky, but in Montana. And uh, uh, so far, I've just never been able to, to get it all to time out. You know, schedule out the way I need it to. And and, uh, uh, and Jason's always told me, you know, he wanted to go with me the first time. You know, when I killed my first mule deer up there, he wanted he wanted to be the one to help get me on that mule deer, and I'm like, absolutely. So, uh, uh, you know, it's just been hard to get our schedules together. Jason's getting busier, busier, and I am too. And it's, uh, hopefully, one day we'll get to. If not, I'll just roll up there by myself. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It'd be an amazing trip, and then obviously it would be super cool to have Jason with you because it, he he definitely knows that country so well. It would be a pretty sweet you know, almost an advantage, like, to have that guy along. Oh, yeah, super, super big advantage, you know, to have him there. And, and I know when we're up there turkey hunting in Montana and our walk in turkey camp with everybody, it's, uh, you know, just, just the way he knows that place up there, you know, it's like he knows, he's, I don't think there's anywhere in Montana Jason hasn't hunted. So, uh, so 
that's what I'm saying. So, yeah, just, just having that, that little bit of experience there on, on, on your side really helps. Yeah, for sure. So switching gears, you know, uh, as uh, I'm excited, I'm sure you're excited too, but, man, I don't think, you know, it's a dog days of summer. I don't think people realize, Tim, how close we are really to kicking off hunting season. So what do we uh, what do we got planned for you as far as uh, this upcoming deer season, hunting season in general? Man, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm always going to hunt Kansas as long as I can get a tag. And uh, Kansas is by far you know, probably my favorite whitetail state. And uh, uh, I've been really successful in Kansas over the last six or seven years. And, and uh, uh, I'll obviously try to be there around the rut, but... We're also going to try to hunt uh, early season this year. I'm hunting uh, Kentucky with my buddy Kyle, Kyle Green from uh, Green Industries. And um, he's also part of Living the Brand and part of Badlands and everything else. But uh, it's going to be my first time to ever get to hunt Velvet Buck. And, and uh, so I'm going to be there, you know, opening day and, uh, and hunt, for, hunt for the week there. And, uh, and I'm pretty excited about that just because, like I said, it's going to be my first time to get to go actually chase bucks and velvet and, uh, and have that opportunity. And, and, and then, you know, I've got a, our family business, which is uh, Wild West Show. So basically the whole month of uh, October, I'm locked down in, in Dallas with, with my family business. And I won't get to hunt at all the whole month of October because uh, we have the Wild West Show there. Four shows a day, every day for for. Uh, for 30 days, which uh, kicks the crap out of me. I, I usually come home. I'm home for about three or four days, and then I'm gone again. I'll leave straight from there and go to probably Nebraska uh, for a week, and then Kansas, and then we're we're going to film. Uh, we're making a film this year about uh, Dustin Holder, which is uh, the public land here in Arkansas where I kind of cut my teeth on public land, and, and it's still one of my favorite all-time places to, to hunt, and we're doing a film for Onyx Map this year about, about, that, about that place. So, uh, you know, we'll start filming some stuff for that film you know, early. So, yeah, it's going to be busy. It's going to be a busy fall, and uh, I'm excited. You know? Yeah, that is super cool. Are you doing uh, the Nebraska deal again with the same guy, same group of guys on on that public land? Yeah, if uh, I don't, I don't think Kyle's coming this year uh, because uh, we're trying to schedule it with Kyle and uh, and BJ will be at uh, will be. I want them there for the film for on X for the Arkansas, uh, the trust and holder here in Arkansas. And, uh, you know, both those guys uh, have full-time gigs and, and taking time off of work to go film these, pro- these projects. It's tough for those guys, and they kind of got to pick and choose. And I, they said, well, where would you rather have us? And I said, well, you know, I'd really rather you guys be able to come to Arkansas because I think it would just be a cool, cool situation for you guys to see where I kind of started hunting public land and, and uh, just see what kind of success we can have. Yeah, when... So, when are you Maybe planning on doing that, Tim? So uh, we'll, be, we'll do Nebraska before Kansas, so I'll probably go there, you know, in the last week of October because I'll be home from Dallas. And, uh, and then we'll, we'll try to hunt, uh, probably trust and hold her down, which is on the river, on the White River. Uh, probably try to hunt there either the week before Thanksgiving or the week after. The rut's kind of late there, so the rut doesn't actually even kick in until somewhere around Thanksgiving. So I, I kind of like to try to catch it in that in that pre-rut phase when it's still kind of cruising. So I usually try to try to hunt that place the week before Thanksgiving because Thanksgiving there's a lot of people show up there to hunt because they'll get there on Thursday and you know they got Friday off, so that gives them a, a four-day weekend. And a lot of them will even take Monday off, you know. And, and Give yourself a five days, five days to hunt. You know, to hunt there. It's a very popular place to hunt. Uh, it, it'll average, it'll probably average the open young buck, and there's some cool restrictions on everything there. You know, they've got to be, you know, uh, uh, 15 inch main beam or 13 inch inside spread. So, uh, uh, yeah, you know, it's uh, there's some restrictions on the on the bucks there. So it makes make, gives those bucks a chance to grow up. Uh, yeah, that's super so, cool. Now, Tim, do you have a uh, sort of idea or theme? already kind of like a, a plot in place for the film yeah it's just more or less going to be uh, it's just more or less going to be about you know where i started as far as my first public land here you know okay so that's uh and and how i hunt it now using using on x is so much different than the way i hunted it when i started it's just little paper maps you know i mean uh before you, you wanted to go scout new places i just had to bell off in the boat because everywhere i go everywhere i hunt there you have to boat in so uh Held off in the boat and boated around to these places, got out and walked. Well, now with on X, you know, I mean, I pull it up on, I pull it up on on X. I find all these little cool pinch points, these places that I want to hang out, and 
I'll pull up to the boat, take my stand in there. Nine times out of ten, that's usually where I hang, wherever I found on that. So that's uh, and that's how I hunt a lot of places. That's how I hunt all these places I go. That's how I hunt Nebraska. That's how I hunt wherever I go. I'll I'll research it first on on that. Then I take off and, and I've already you know done the majority of my scouting you know before I ever leave. Yeah, that's super cool. I'm starting to get more and more into the Onyx, and uh, within the past six months, man, I've I've used it so much. Uh, it's it's pretty cool, and it's uh, such a great tool. I kind of don't know how and what I was doing before it, you know. That, that's how much yeah. I like it. So that will be cool to see uh, kind of some of your in-depth perspective on uh, using it in this film and, and maybe gaining and learning a couple other tips because you, you've, you've been using it for years that I know of, and like I said, I'm just kind of getting into it the past couple, six months. So Yeah, I've been, I've been using Onyx. It's like year five for me with Onyx, and I was introduced to it in the West, and I was actually using it before they even had, the, you know, they, I mean, they didn't have the capability, uh, they didn't have the map for the Midwest yet, so I really couldn't use it to deer hunt, but I was using it, you know, studying it, looking at how the Western guys were using it. I knew it was steadily moving East, and so I knew that at some point in time we were going to have access to it, and now they basically have uh, 48 states. So that you can get on the phone app. And oh, and by the way, if anybody wants a discount on that, if you put in LTV20 on Onyx Maps uh, as the code, you get a 20% discount on on uh, any of the premium maps. So just to make sure, I'm having a slightly hard time hearing you, Tim. Did you say LTV20? LTV20. Yeah. Okay. And that'll give you an automatic 20% off. Perfect. Yeah, that's a nice deal, man. Uh, I can't speak enough about it. That it's been. Uh, a game changer probably like you uh using that stuff so it's that's really neat when is uh when do you guys have a uh, deadline for the film to be done or to be out or where is it going to come out at uh it'll it'll actually be out on uh on x maps on their on their youtube channel um uh, there's actually uh, a few of us that are making films for Onyx this year. Uh, Jason Matt is making a film, a couple films for them. Uh, uh, I think Newberg does a lot of, Randy Newberg does a lot of stuff with them. I think the, the guys from Born and Raised Outdoors are making a film. Uh, I'm making a couple films for them. And, uh, yeah, you'll be able to see those, see those on uh, Onyx Map. We'll all start showing it up. I mean, we really don't have any deadlines because, obviously, we're still shooting a lot of those. And, and uh, by the time you go into you know, you're going to pre-production on that kind of stuff, and, and uh, you know, you've got everything kind of storyboarded out, but a lot of times the stories will take a different turn, and, uh, and then you, uh, you have to kind of change everything up. So you can never, it's hard to really schedule uh, when we're going to launch some of these films because, uh, like I said, you just never know which direction the story is going to go. So then when you get back and you get into post, post-production, your, uh, you know, the storyline you had in mind and you had a vision this whole time may have changed. So now you're in post-production and you're changing everything up. So it's good that we don't have a lot of deadlines for all that. They, they don't really require us to have a lot of deadlines. And I appreciate that. You know, it's not like, like the TV shows have deadlines. That's why I don't do TV because I'm not good with deadlines. So. <laughs> That's a good way to work. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's going to be fun. I mean, I think I, I'm excited to see what everybody comes up with for their Onyx stuff. I know uh, Jim Kinsey and Jenna Waller are doing an Onyx film this year too, so uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited. And uh, we got a new website being built right now. I do, so uh, hopefully it'll be up here in the next 30 days, and we'll be active on it. And I'll also be writing a, writing a blog for Onyx Maps called Living the Brand, uh, which is basically going to be I'm kind of going to do that blogs on on X Maps website about whitetail hunting. Uh, 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 kind of be one of the whitetail one of the whitetail guys, I guess. So <laughs> uh, you can check that stuff out. And then our new uh, our new website is fixing uh, launch. Like I said, here in the next 30 days, it'll be timengleybowhunting.com, and uh, yeah, it'll have a lot of cool stuff on it. So um, going forward with that. Yeah, that's that's good to hear, man. I'm excited about that, and uh, very cool that uh, people will have access to the Onyx films via YouTube, so that's pretty awesome as well. Yeah, and that's, and that's you know, I mean, there's a lot of good stuff on online right now. I mean, there's still some good stuff on television, don't get me wrong, but man, there's a lot of good stuff online, you know. I mean, there's, uh, I know, like I said, uh, Matt, Jason Matt Green is putting a lot of cool stuff up on RMEF. He's got their YouTube channel up and running. And, uh, Randy Newberg, Christy Titus, uh, man, there's, there's just a lot of cool stuff that's online right now, and, and uh, I love it. I love the fact that we don't have those boundaries. Um, and listen, I'm not I'm not running down television at all. Don't get me wrong. Uh, there's still a lot of stuff I watch on television uh, as far as hunting shows go. 
<clears throat> but the fact that we can, uh, you know, we can move forward with with this online presence and not really have the boundaries that we have with, uh, you know, with TV, uh, you know, to me it's changing the game. You know, uh, basically, you know, Big and Jay's is, is I've been with Big and Jay's for about four years now, and and uh, you know, there's places that that it's legal to see, you know, and, and uh, uh, the television you just can't show it anymore. And and here's the thing about baiting, and I don't want to get into this debate, but I'm saying this out loud right now. If it's, if it's legal to debate there, if you're not baiting, whether you believe in it or don't believe in it, if you're not feeding, you're not some sort of feed, you're not going to have any deal on your property. So uh, if your neighbor's feeding, you're definitely not going to have any deal on your property. You know, the fact that that on, uh, you know, mainstream television, you can't show any of that stuff anymore. Uh, in one way, I think it's good, but in another way, I, I just don't, you know. I mean, it's legal. It's a legal way to hunt, and it's, uh, uh, whether, you, whether you think it's good or bad, it doesn't matter. I'm personally not necessarily for baiting, but I do know this. If you hunt in a state where it's legal, you better be putting it out. But that's just some of the leeway that, that we get as far as uh, uh, online as opposed to, to the networks. Um, you know, I can actually show how we, you know, how we start out in the, the first part of the year, you know, putting out our mineral and, and uh, uh, how we put out our mineral and how we, uh, uh, you know, go straight into our feeding program. And, and uh, we just basically supplement the feed, that, the natural feed that's already there. We're not, we're not feeding them, you know, strictly going out and pouring out piles of corn. We're not doing that. We're, we're using Big and J's to supplement the already natural food, food source that they already have and basically just using it for... Uh, uh, using it more or less to get pictures is what we really do, <laughs> plus the nutritional value uh, of it. Um, and then once once those once those major food sources are gone, then we still got a supplemental food feeding program going on. So those deer have always got something to eat, no matter what. Yeah, I'm a I'm a hundred percent pro advocate of of uh, supplemental feed or mineral. Um, you know, and like t- kind of getting back to what you said, Tim, about the TV stuff. I always thought it was funny how every bear hunt you see on TV is in a can, you know, uh, in a big giant 55 gallon can where they're baiting these bears in. And some, some reason we're very uh, okay with that. And we're not okay with the reality that there's multitudes of states across the country that you can bait legally for deer. And, uh, you know, there's rhymes or reasons to why it's got, why somebody does it. But like you said, if you're in a state, Tim, that has legalized baiting and you're not doing it, odds are that guy is sucking every deer off of your property and you're not going to see nothing. So, um, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah you I know, have, I just, guys, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just going to say it just blows my mind how people look at things sometimes, you know, about it. Yeah, and it doesn't, it would, you know, I mean, I, I'm not necessarily a, a, an advocate of baiting. I mean, I really don't care one way or another. It's like public land here. That's why I hunt too much public land here because there is no baiting. I mean, you, on public land, you literally have to use your skills, you know, as a hunter, as a woodsman, to figure out where these deer are and why they're traveling, what their food sources are, and, and you know, where they're at during the rut, where they're at during a certain you know, time of year because of what food source they've got. Uh, uh, that's what I like about public land. Uh, a lot of guys here where I live, uh, they're baiting is legal in Arkansas, and, and uh, there's a lot of guys here, you know, they're not sitting over a corn pile, they're long. And, uh, right. And that, you know, uh, I don't want to be that kind of hunter. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I'm just saying that's just it's not me. That's, I, I, I rarely, now, do we hunt where feed is? We absolutely hunt where feed is. But that's not why I found those spots. I found those spots originally, and then I just supplemented the food that was already there. Uh, right. Just holds those deer there longer. So when when the when the food source is gone, then we're still feeding there, and those deer still come traveling those spots. But you know, uh, I hear people all the time out west talk about you know a lot of western guys are, you know they don't really understand that the, the, the baiting situation and and, uh, and the feed situation. And here's the deal, yeah, if, it, if you live in a state where it's legal, like you said, you. Uh, if you're not baiting and your neighbor is, then uh, your neighbor's going to have all the deer on his property. You're going to be sitting there in yeah. an empty patch of woods. Even if you've got a, the best food plot in the world, I mean, I'm a believer in food plots. If you've got the best food plot in the world, uh, yeah, I mean, it's still a good natural food source, and I think it's going to, I think you're going to hold some deer. But uh, uh, that supplemental feed is going to, you know, really, really hold those deer. So, you know, it's a catch-22. So. Yeah, it is. You know, like, I don't get to... It's legal here in Michigan. I, I don't do it. 
I do supplemental feed, but I do that after the season, after the crops are down. I'm not a guy, uh, I, I take my 10 pounds of mineral in a month to keep cameras going and, and, and mineral sites refresh. But, uh, you know, some of my hunting spots, I'm not walking a 50 pound bag of corn uh, 100, through 100 acres of standing corn to, to put some feed out. You know, that's not how I learned to hunt. But I just don't have a problem with it and, you know, teach guy its own. You know, like that's how some people learn to hunt, and at least you're learning getting to see animals. And, and that's a big part of it, it you know, it, is spending enough time with animals that you can actually learn how to hunt them, that is. So, yeah, you, but, know, you know, here's, here's, here's a fact. I have, never, I have never killed a really big buck on food. Never. Yeah, I hear that all the time, and I haven't either. Like I said, I don't hunt over a pile of anything, so right. I've never done it. You know, but I, but I see and I hear all the times from guys in Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas. If you don't have feed out, you're not pulling those deer out. You'll never see them, even on a camera. You'll never see them. So it's just a vital part of hunting in some parts of the country. Yeah, it is, and, and that's that's the same thing with our with our place in Kansas, like. Uh, we got a spot up there called the 170 stand. We killed uh, we killed 200, 370 inch deer off of that stand in, in, in a five year period, and it's a 12 foot ladder stand, 12 foot to the box to the to the platform, and um, it's just in a great funnel. And there's cows in there year round, so you can't can't feed. So we never feed it. But I mean, we never put anything out, no mineral, no nothing. But we killed 370 inch deer right there. But there's a reason that you only hunt it during the rut, and it's an 80 yard wide stretch of timber runs along a creek between two bed nets. So, you know, it's all about picking your spots. You know, whether you've got food out or whether you don't have food out. Um, you know, I know a lot of guys will just go into an area and go, boy, there's a cool tree right there, and they just start pouring the feed out and hope the deer come into it. Um, uh, I, I try not to change the way they're naturally traveling anyway. Um, so I want them to continue to travel their natural route, and I'll just, uh, you know, we don't go in and pour bags and bags of feed out. I mean, uh, one of the things I like to utilize is those big and J blocks because I can take that block in there and throw it out, put my camera on it, and, and it'll last for a couple of weeks without having to go back in there and send up the, the area. Um, and we'll put those blocks out. But if, we're, if we're, like, you know, early season when we're not going to be there and the crops are starting to get out of the field, we'll throw a couple of blocks out in each spot so that they'll last longer. And we're mainly doing that because we're, we're trying to get pictures. But, you know, the, the last year I really killed, that was in bait, was a few years ago in Texas. I killed a management buck. Just an 18 inch wide eight point. He had a real short little nubby time. He was just strictly a management buck, and he came straight into the big and J's. And I'll just tell you right now, he was standing there eating in a pile of big and J's, and I put one through him, and it didn't bother me in the least. <laughs> right. But, you know, again, everything is the way you look at it, and some would say that's no different than somebody, you know, a buck coming into a, a one acre kill plot of, of beets. You know what I mean? Or, or yeah. Or turn up. So it's it's just how you look at things, but it's just part of the way we hunt. And there's no no uh, wrong way to do it, or there's nothing wrong with talking about it either. Yeah, and I think that's why it turns me on to go to go to that public land so much because I am back to using those woods skills. You know, um, I am back to, to having to be on my own, and I'm not. You know, there's no base. You know, there's no base. There's no feed. You're just having to find those good natural food sources and. Uh, and, and it's just you against them, you know. You you got nothing to hold them there, you know. I mean, they can go anywhere they want to go, and there's nothing to hold them there. And, and and you know, a lot of guys struggle with that. And you know, that's how come it's it, you know kind of my thing. I love to go to public land. I love to go to places I've never been. I love to go in there with no bait or no feed or anything, and just have to uh, you know rely on those wisdom skills and uh, try to uh, try to make it happen on my own. No, I I totally understand that. It's uh in a way, it's neat to kind of disconnect from you know, a multitude of trail cameras or food plots and, and thinking this spot or that spot's a gimme. I'm just w- waiting on the right weather. You know, that, that reminds me of, you know, when I hunt state land or, you know, I grew up in uh, hunting in northern Michigan where it was a lot of the same stuff, Tim, where you just hope to catch deer coming from natural browse to natural browse. And uh, like I said, it's just a neat way to disconnect from the, you know, the way we hunt nowadays and kind of get back to your roots. Yeah, exactly. And I think, uh, uh, and that excites me. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I really love working with Onyx Maps is, uh, uh, you know, they get, it gives, and I know I'm harping on Onyx Maps, man. I, I know I'm singing the praises, but, uh, 
I, I have reason to. I mean, that, those guys have really given me the confidence to go out of my comfort. So people ask me all the time, you know, man, I want to go to these other states and hunt, but I can't afford to pay an outfitter. I can't afford this. And I'm like, man, uh, I'm, you know, I, I just you know, I don't know enough about the country to go on my own. It's going to take too long. You've got to go scout. You've got to do this. Man, I'm going to places I've never seen before in my life other than on the computers or on my phone on on it. And, you know, we hung, we hung a stand in, in Nebraska last year, you saw the episode where I missed the 150 10 point, you know, uh, a couple times. Yeah. Uh, uh, that we hung that stand just blind. I mean, we just we pulled it up on on X, drove down there, it looked like a good spot, drove in there, there it was, and we hung the stand, and I missed a 150 inch deer on it. And then last right. year in Nebraska, we put uh, that, that this episode will be up here pretty quick. Uh, we actually hung a stand that was 15 yards from the seventh hole of the Frisbee Golf Course. <laughs> Oh, that's and, BJ, funny. and BJ killed a, a nine point out of that stand. And what was even funnier was 30 minutes before he killed that nine point, a guy came through playing frisbee golf. Oh my gosh, that's crazy, but pretty cool. But it, was, but it was a cool little pinch point right there, coming off of some private onto the public, and it was the only place those deer could really travel to go to some big timber that was in this big national piece of national forest. And uh, and it was legal hunting, so uh, you know it was legal hunting, so they. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, nothing wrong with yeah. that. Well, uh, sadly, Tim, I have a client I got to train here in about 15 minutes, but uh, kind of let every. I don't want to get off the phone with you, but I got to kind of get prepped for that. But let everybody know where they can find you and and uh, the availability and to get an Onyx Map as well. Yeah, so onyxmaps.com, and you can put in code LTB20. That'll give you 20% off of uh, your purchase. For the uh, for the phone app or cards or whichever you prefer, and uh, yeah, I'll be looking for uh, timinsleybowhunting.com. And right now, if you want to find any episodes of Living the Brand, uh, you can go to BadlandsPacks.com YouTube channel and uh, the Badlands Packs YouTube channel, and just jump on there, go to Signature Series, and there it is. All every episode for the last uh, two years or something. And we got a new one coming out, which is my Kansas buck from this past year. Uh, we got a new one coming out Tuesday, actually. So whatever day this is, I don't know what day you'll air this, but uh, this Tuesday we have a new episode coming out. So it's part one of Kansas from last year. So it'll be uh, uh, my buck, my 12 point last year. Part two will be DJ, and it'll come out next. Yeah, hopefully I'll uh, have some time this afternoon. I'm gonna bust my butt and get this done and out for you tomorrow, Tim. And that way, uh, hopefully some drive some viewers over and watch your films over there for you. Yeah, brother, I appreciate it. Always good to catch up with you, Brandon. I appreciate it. Yeah, you too, man. Thanks again, and I apologize. I have to run off. I didn't realize we we spent through <laughs> 45 minutes that fast, but that was awesome. That's cool, brother. So, Take it easy. All right. I appreciate it. And uh, boys and girls, as you know, every Tuesday outdoor podcast channel, podros.com, and uh, leave us a five-star review on iTunes at Take Aim Outdoors. And, Tim, thanks again. We'll see you soon. See you, buddy.